Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Disturbing Truth. So today we're going to have a mystical discussion. We're going to talk about the journey of a believer and the point of creation, the point of life. Like what's the meaning of life? What are we supposed to be doing? I'm Yasmin Al Mahdi. I'm here with Sihan Al Mahdi and with Sarah Al Mahdi. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So yeah, this is this is basically the question everyone asks. No, it really is uh, the question of what's the meaning of life. You know, mm-hmm. like so many scholars, so many philosophers, great philosophers, ancient and modern philosophers. It's the only thing people question, and naturally, people in the day and age like they come to a point in their life where they're like, "What am I doing on earth?" Mm-hmm. I I know it's not something that people it's like at the front of people's mind, but those who uh, like truly are thinkers. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one of the main question everyone has, you know. Mm. And everyone, every person in life do actually have this question sometime in their life, right? Yeah. It happens that they question and wonder. Yeah. So it's not really just philosophers, but but every single human being yeah, wonders. Exactly. So it's like like wh- what's our reality? Like where did we come from? Where are we going? What are we doing here? What's what's like? What's my purpose? Mm. And it, it's it's interesting, you know, it's like uh, the culture that we have, like so the way sci- modern science has made and everything is like we just we just we just became and we, nobody knows what reason. Mm. And we're a species who has no idea like who who we are. Mm. And I, I think that's I think that's very disturbing, actually. Mm. Mm. Like it, all of a sudden I'm just aware mm. I have a body. I'm living a life. I, I, li- I, I didn't even choose to be in the family I am in, I, mm. I don't, where did I choose? I don't even know that, you know? Mm. So, and I'm just um, told to have a nine to five job, you know, and uh, pay my taxes and bills and die. Mm. You know? So mm. like, uh, I think we said s- something similar before is like, imagine like, like where we created just to die, like the gr- the most certain thing that mm. we know that's going to happen to all of us is mm. death. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Or, or like the, the atheistic view is, oh, you just, I'm just here to have fun. And mm. be a good person, be a yeah. decent person, but do whatever I want for yeah. for a few years, and then and, and then, then die. still die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you only, yeah, yeah, you only live once, so and you gotta yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. So make the best out of it. What's fascinating is that yeah. everyone on the earth has that one common thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, so if you're a Christian, um, I believe that my salvation is just to believe in Jesus Christ, and then I die. Mm. If I'm a Muslim, <laughs> my salvation is to believe in Muhammad as the last prophet, follow yeah. the the Sharia, and then die. Mm. Uh, if I'm I'm Jewish, I have to follow every single law in the Torah, and then I die. Mm, yeah. If I'm an atheist, I don't need to believe in anybody. I can just believe in modern si- whatever, mm, whatever. Mm. Maybe not even believe in science. It doesn't even mm. matter, and I'm just going to die. You know, mm. it's 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 strange how we don't know anything, yeah. Yeah, and that's very that scary. One, there's not one specific question. Uh, I mean, answer to that question. Mm. There's not like okay. This is my purpose. This is what I'm made for. This mm-hmm. is what I'm. Uh, this is uh, what I'm gonna be doing. You know, this is how I'm going to achieve my goal. You know, mm. there's nothing. There's not one answer. There's not one path. Mm. There's no straight path on no. this earth, at least, not no. that we know of. Mm. So people, they're probably bored of this question, which is like, what's the meaning of life? Oh, it's such a cliche. Everybody asks it. Every like YouTuber, every influencer in this day and age is probably discussing it on their podcast. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, okay, why are we here? And then everybody has their theories and their deep thoughts regarding it. Mm. But what's what is it really? Mm. So how do you know? Well, you you cannot know unless you know the one who who created it all. Mm. That is, if you believe in a being or mm. a force that uh, made this all to be without an accident like mm. the, there is someone behind it all mm. so uh what's fascinating is that you know w- there's so many scriptures out there so when you read them they, they'll tell you maybe a way of life mm-hmm. and or a ha- or a story of the past mm-hmm. but not many really truly go into the depths of the purpose I mean, mm-hmm. how everything began. Mm-hmm. Like everybody says, yes, Adam and Eve, the creation theory, the creation uh, belief that mm-hmm. we have, and uh, but there's not really depths unless you go into like the no- the Gnostic side of um, mm-hmm. Christianity. And a fascinating thing is that even those scriptures, they're they're rejected. We mm-hmm. we've classed the churches rejected them, mm-hmm. and uh, so we know that the Alul Bayt from the Miss Peace, they are. A, We've d- we covered them so many times over our episodes, and of course we ha- we believe in them, and they are the ones that hold most of the knowledge of the mm-hmm. after the prophets and messengers. 
the Arul Bayt, they, they had a manuscript, mm-hmm. specifically uh, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, mm-hmm. from whom his piece, the sixth Imam. Uh, Shia, the Shia religion don't know about this. It's not a mainstream. Mm. It's not a mainstream book, by the way. Mm. Like, uh, like so for me, like like Seha, she came from a Christian background. For, for us, discussing the Al Hafta Sharif is as is, is the same as like for her. She'd be like, oh, I don't know it. I wasn't raised Muslim. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. The Muslims mm. don't know about it. The mm. Shias themselves who claim to believe in Imam Jafar Sadiq do not know about it, mm. about it mm. until mm. actually Abu Sadiq from him is peace. Uh, in the past, he is the first person to translate the Al Haft, ma- this amazing book yeah, from we actually, Arabic to English. We yeah. actually have it on our website um, as well. It is free to download. It's uh, really amazing. It yeah. has a lot of secrets and mysteries. We are going to cover some of them, um, but I would recommend for anyone who is interested mm. in um, in anything. You yeah. know that Prophet Muhammad or any of his family taught. Exactly. Um, that yeah. I would, yeah, we would definitely recommend that yeah. you go download it. And our website is written there on the screen. You can see it, ahmadireligion dot org. Please feel free to check it out. Yeah, and um, so the book it's uh, a do- is a conversation, a dialogue between Imam Jafar Sadiq from him his peace and Mufaddal, his uh, uh, close companion, mm. and this book like. It contains so many mis- like mm. amazing mystical spiritual knowledge, like things that can truly like blow a person's mind, and it talks about the beginning of creation in a way that is just so fascinating that we it, that it we you must read this book. Mm. Mm. So he Mufaddal then asks the imam the questions everybody right now is still asking people uh, mm-hmm. god yeah, yeah he asks him what is the purpose of life why am mm-hmm. i here what's the meaning i know so many prophets have come mm-hmm. and gone but actually imam Jafar said, i don't know if i really truly understand my purpose here mm-hmm. and then the imam he discusses it he does and before we go into talking about what he discusses i want to remind the viewers that you can call in at any time the number is there on the screen, you can have uh, you can call us via WhatsApp or Telegram, and we will answer your call and answer your questions. Anything that you would like to answer, uh, ask us. So yeah, back to the book, right? Um, this book um, talks about really heavy, beautiful things that today's Muslims don't really discuss or talk about, and. Um, he discussed something really Im- Imam Sadiq, he discussed uh, something really important peace be upon him he goes into um the beginning of creation the very 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 beginning and this is co- becomes really mystical mm-hmm. and really interesting to read and know about so he starts off by telling that god he created something called shadow light okay and this is from god's shadow light okay and it's like he explains it like it's sort of a consciousness yeah. okay and it is it's in its purest form okay uh, and this is like a shadow light that is like the light of god or it's from the uh, it's of the light of god uh, and this sh- this shadow he splits it into two and yeah. now the shadows they start to become aware of each other because he split it and it starts becoming aware of each other and it starts becoming aware of their existence because they weren't before and now mm-hmm. they're like oh wow we exist yeah just like us yeah, yeah. we just like well one day we just exist and mm-hmm. it's fascinating actually so uh, when you're a child like you they, they, when you look at children they, they're not aware but all of a sudden if you think about it there was a time where you were just all of a sudden aware mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter what age, three, four, five, but you just became aware all of a sudden. Mm. Isn't that fascinating? It's so fascinating. And imagine, now this is in another dimension, but it's so... Similar. So, so there's this type of similarity. We cannot understand these dimensions, but we can always draw... But that's draw why they... Yeah, parallels. parallels. That's why the imams have to... They, 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 they do their best to, when they explain something of another world, they have to use the likeness of what's in front of yeah. us that we can understand. Otherwise, it's very hard for us the to, mind comprehend. to comprehend. Yeah, because right? it's yeah. like a 3D mm-hmm. being trying yeah. to comprehend 4D. Yeah. It's, it's, mm. it's quite, it's very, it's very difficult. It's yeah, very I mean, you know, if you, if you think about a baby, you know, who's never seen the outside mm. world, you know, and then, and then the mom is like stroking the belly and telling them, you know, all the beautiful things that this baby is going to have, 
you know, like all the beautiful toys and all the colors. This baby is like, wow, that sounds great, but I don't know what you're talking about. You yeah, know, exactly. like they're not gonna understand yeah. until they come out, out of that womb, womb like yeah. that like small mm. sack, mm. and they see this entire world. You know that, and they get to know what it is exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so here it's the same, and these shadows don't know anything now except for their existence and that of each other, right? And um, that they are aware of each other. That's it. They don't know. So what happens is that God has to educate them. He has to teach the shadows. And he starts off by uh, glorifying himself. So he has to teach them how, who God is. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because they're not aware now of God. It's the same with us. Like when you're born, you're a baby, you're not aware of God. So so here, well, God you know, has to you, teach you, them. You, you sense your mother, but you don't know it's like mother. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know her mm -hmm. at that that exp ex advanced mm, level yeah. you mm. just know that this is someone i'm in need of mm. yeah. it's, uh, it's fascinating so god has to do the same thing he has to now teach them so god educates the the shadows he yeah. does he educates them and he makes tasbih and he makes tak takbir of himself so he he kind of says things like uh, god is great uh, glory be to god and and sentences like this and they will repeat after him these mm -hmm. shadows they repeat it and it's these like shadows yeah, just like a child. So these shadows or consciousness mm -hmm. uh, would know now that there's a God and they will learn about him. Yeah. And in the Quran, um, it goes into how God doesn't speak except from behind a veil. So when God speaks to the people or the creation, uh, it has to be behind a veil. God doesn't directly speak to us. We don't see God and he's talking to us. It's from behind a veil. And in the very beginning... From before the establishment of creation, there's this establishment of this veil, okay? And it's created from God's own tasbih. And this is before, now we're talking about before the shadow light uh, is created. So the shadow of God was turned into a veil. And if we go back now to, we have a veil, okay? And we have this shadow light that was created and made aware of itself. And... Um, and in the book, it explains and explains how God glorified himself and how he spoke. Well, it was through that veil. So that veil existed before the shadow light was aware of itself, uh, was aware of itself and aware of God, right? Mm -hmm. So the veil is the one who's speaking to those shadow light and, and glorifying God mm -hmm. and, and, and saying, okay, glorify God in this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in another episode of Abu Sadiq from Hamas Peace, he does talk about what the veil is. And he explains that the veil is the Quran. Okay. So here we get a little bit of an insight. Okay. So there's this, this veil, this Quran that is teaching these shadows that God exists. Mm. Mm. Just like the Quran today, when, when the Quran was sent down, the Prophet uh, was given to the people by Prophet Muhammad. It was, Prophet Muhammad was teaching that there was uh, a god. Mm. Yeah, or else they wouldn't have known. Well, they wouldn't have known. Uh, and so all of this was beginning, this whole story that I just went through, this is what the Haftar Sharif explains, that this is the beginning of creation, yeah. of all of creation. And uh, these shadows were split into more and more and more and more. What, what, what does the book mean? What is the shadow split into? So the from the shadows, the ghosts are created. So the shadow is something. Okay, so God creates a shadow from his shadow. And then the shadow is split into, um, it creates from the shadow, you create the ghost, right? And from the ghost creates the soul. And it continues and it continues going down, down, down until we reach this physical world that we are actually in today. Yeah, so it's like this lesser version. Yeah. I mean, not even lesser, but as in like, it's like the ray of light, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just goes and goes and goes. It just, mm -hmm. the light just mm -hmm. changes density. So the shadows is the purest form and it goes down and it becomes like, not so as purest form, but like, like it becomes then, less and less. And you become... As and you become said. here. Yeah. And this is the focus of today's episode. Today we're going to talk about what became the purpose of... In, of the life on this physical uh, realm, this physical world, this physical mm -hmm. dimension. Yeah. Exactly. So, God, um, so he created this veil to speak to his creation from by. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And then he started to test his creation by this veil. Yeah. So he would veil himself with, um, he would take a creature or a shadow of, or the light as a veil. And then, and then he would test his creation to see if they would obey him. Because this was the purpose, um, you know, of creation from the first time. If you, if you look at the story of Adam and Eve, mm. you know, what was their test that they failed was they disobeyed God. They yeah. didn't obey him. Yeah. So, so he started, um, you know, he started um, veiling himself and seeing if the creation would obey him. Mm. So then in the story of Adam and Eve, mm. you know the story that everybody yeah. knows the story. Mm. So now it makes sense because because um God wanted to create Adam. Yeah. He wanted to create the creature Adam as his veil to mm. take on as a veil so that his creation would obey him obey his voice mm. and he would see if the people understood if this was yes. god and would they obey him exactly they, if, he was testing if them. they would recognize him mm. if they would recognize that's god mm. you know mm. so then in in the at the time of adam and eve you know this veil he, it wasn't hidden like it this like it was over the years yeah you know it was open they uh, got announced hey when i create this this veil and take it yeah. as my veil yeah. you know then prostrate and obey obey mm. my voice yeah. through this veil yeah. and that's when the big uh, yeah. catastrophe happened with iblis because he knew mm. you know he just he knew the voice of god but he decided to disobey him mm. just In purely veil, because of the veil that god took mm. he didn't like it yeah exactly he detested mm. that veil yeah, yeah exactly so yeah, so so the big problem with Iblis yeah. was that he decided to uh, not prostrate, not not obey this veil. Yeah. He said, "Take anything else as a veil." So he started. He starts worshiping anything else, mm. tree. You like, know well, what's like? Um, like mm. you, you makes you wonder what's going on in his mind. Like he, yeah. how much does he hate the sight of this specific veil that yeah. he's like? It I know you it's wonder. you in there, but please, can you wear another mask? Mm. It was weird. Yeah, it, it makes is. you wonder, like mm. what what was what was Iblis's problem? Like mm. such a big problem with Adam, you know? Mm. It sounds and this like is a story in itself, by the way. Yeah. It's like a huge story. We could. Yeah go into it and, and so it's fun. really interesting and fascinating yeah. but we here clearly see that there is a problem exactly. he doesn't yeah. want that no. yeah so so then he starts going and prostrating and obeying anything else he's like I, he was just hoping that that god would accept mm. his prayer and and there's a quote uh, from god from the book you know and and allah said um, by my might and by my glory i will not accept any of your deeds or any of your worship except if you worship me through the door and through mm. the veil that I have appointed. Mm. Okay, so now we know that the only way, the only um, way that we can know and obey God is through the veil. Mm. Because he, he takes this creature as a veil, just like in the creation story, he, he created the veil and then he uses it to communicate with with people with mm -hmm. with the creation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so how are you going to know god how are you going to know him and obey him and be in his paradise mm -hmm. unless you speak and yeah. know god and the only way that you can know god and speak to god is through the veil because god says even in the quran he says he doesn't he doesn't yeah. speak it's not for allah to speak to to yeah. his creation mm -hmm. You know, straight up, he has to take an angel or a veil, mm, yeah, yeah. you know, or by by inspiration. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, you know, it, it that's why that's why it was such a huge test for humanity. That's why whenever Iblis decided he doesn't want to follow the veil, mm. you know, anymore, it basically created uh, a huge test for mm. humanity. Mm. And it was too arrogant. Exactly. So mm. now that now we're here because because now this this teaching has been lost this this purpose yeah, that we exactly. have the entire purpose mm. of of creation to, is to obey the veil and to hear and recognize the voice of God but now we we cannot mm. because because this this whole purpose has been lost. 
Mm. You know, because this is like news to people. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 huge news. What what do you mean? Yeah, what do you yeah. mean that I I want I have my Quran. This is all that I need. I have my no, preacher. I have not. I have my mom. I I I do my five daily prayers. What do you mean? Mm. Yeah. You know. No, yeah. but uh, it b- exactly what you just said. And uh, if they, if their Quran or their preacher or their mom was enough, then we wouldn't have all the suffering on the planet, mm. and people won't be so unsure whether God exists or not. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And the Quran, by the way, yeah. we said that it was a veil from a previous episode that Abbas mm-hmm. spoke about from him his peace. Um, but we also know that the Quran is not really just a book. That we have Ahlul Bayt and the mm-hmm. Prophet. They were I mean, the living Quran. They were the living to Quran. The Quran. Exactly. Yeah, they are the ones who speak the words of the Quran. They are the ones who knows how to interpret it. So it has to be a human, right? Exactly. exactly. I mean, to be honest, you know, if you have a book, for example, if I if I give you a book in in Romanian and it's the best book in the world, but you, it's just words to you because you don't speak Romanian. Mm. You don't mm. understand what it's saying. You know, yeah. so so there's no life. There's no mm. like the entire purpose and the point of the book mm. has been t- stripped away from it yeah. unless you have someone to tell you what it Interpret means. Interpret the yeah. language. Exactly. You yeah. have to have an interpreter in order to understand. Otherwise, it's just empty words, which mm. is, you know, why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, this is why he prophesied about the Quran. Mm. If mm. you remember, you know, yeah. in the Hadith, he, he prophesied. That's why it's only a book. It's only the writing. Yeah. It's only the the the, the picture. Letters, yeah. mm. Exactly yeah. because because there's no imam to interpret it. Yeah. You know mm. because they've killed them all or mm. or or tr- yeah. or attack them or fight them yeah. all the time. When in exactly. reality, the entire purpose of humanity is to obey and hear the voice of God through the veil and mm. to follow it. Exactly, mm. and um, th- and so then the question is like, then why did God all of a sudden? Like why did he hide himself? Why God hid hid himself in a veil? Mm. So it's clear from the beginning story that you mentioned. It's because uh, despite God uh, choosing, uh, like having his wanting his will implemented, Iblis fought it. Mm. He didn't like it. Uh, he showed so much disobedience, and a lot of disobedience uh, was uh, given after the fall as well of Adam, Eve, and Iblis to Earth. Mm. Well, actually, outside Eden. And uh, this fall led to God hiding himself behind a veil because he knew that the children of Iblis or the sons of Cain, they would just go ahead and start murdering Mm. his veils. Mm. So what did they do? They would either murder the veil, they'll skin alive the veil, they'll fight the veil, and they have fought every veil that that God has taken on this earth. You see, that's, that's, it's, it's so sad. It's such a tragic story, actually, if you contemplate over it. Like, it's a tragedy. Like, truly, mm-hmm. this earth has a very tragic story. Mm-hmm. And that story is between God and uh, Iblis, one of his... And he remember, he was called Azazil at one point. He was his yeah. most beloved. Mm-hmm. Azazil was one of his most beloved creations. So then he became this, like, one-on-one between him and his Lord. Mm-hmm. And, like, now every time his Lord takes on a veil, he is adamant by taking on the veil of his sons and uh, wanting to is- extinguish that light. And mm. that's what's happening right now. Mm. So that's why uh, God had to hide himself. Mm. Another thing is, is it's for creation to mm. truly prove it, it itself, t- whether it's from those angels that prostrated before mm. Adam or it's uh, like it's uh, Father Satan who mm. disobeyed. Mm. So what does God do? God, he is a treasure that wants to be found you know Mm. and he's a treasure that he places himself on this earth but hidden Mm -hmm. so he places himself on the earth in an imam or a a a being Mm. a creature that is worthy of him taking as a vessel Mm. at first it was adam and then then he continues on with all the prophets Mm -hmm. so what happens then he hides behind this and then he gives a call from the earth Mm -hmm. he gives a shout because I'm here, you know. Mm. He claims that he is who he is. Mm. The people hear it. Some it falls on deaf ears. Some they heed it. They heed it, and they like they recognize. That's why we was me and Alex was talking about the other day. We were saying that you just know, you know, when we heard Abu Sayyid's voice, or we uh, mm. or the believers in the time of Jesus or Moses heard them. They just knew, despite their backgrounds, despite their knowledge of scripture, despite. Uh, their life and this might even probably they didn't even believe in a god mm. but when they heard Abu Sadiq's voice they were like oh this is familiar mm. you know and they're like something in the depths mm. of the soul said that I have to go to him like, mm. I just know him 
I just know him and It's I have like to go. It's like an instant love. Yes. Like you feel mm. like, wow, a believer, you know, somebody, somebody that you can trust. You, exactly. You, you know, mm. yeah. I mean, so then, so then, what, what what did it become? It became like this testing creation to sift us, like well, from who to sift us from I- I- Iblis's creation and whether we're God's creation. And this is a huge test. Yeah, man. no, it's if one it's of the it's gr- it's biggest tests. Test, yeah. So the test is in that whether are you going to pray your five daily prayers, or if you're if you're going to wear a, a clothing over your head, or mm. if you're going to follow every single tiny law that's in the Torah mm. uh, to its detail without, uh, despite the intention. Mm. Um, it's the test is that are you someone who recognizes God's voice on earth? Mm. It's so it's that's, so that's sad. The test. It's like it's like what 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 the human being um, has gone through. You know, is is like you. We've been put into a, a box like mm. a like a cage, and we were told, you know, scratch on the wall. You know, scratch mm. on the wall, scratch on the wall, or or something silly. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. and then and then the one day. You know the the door of of the prison is wide open, and and your savior he comes he says, "Here I am. I've come to rescue you." And you say, "No, I must scratch the wall." Yeah, you know, I like must Plato's scratch the wall. Mm-hmm. Like, and then and then you fight him. You fight. He, he's trying to get you out. Mm. You know, and and you fight him. And and tooth and nail, he say, "No, I have to f- scratch mm. the wall. This is my only salvation." And, you know, and, and this is, this is how test. I feel. It's so. Yeah. Uh, like it's so evil to be honest it's mm. it's very sad but this is the big test in itself because when he hides himself behind a veil and and he comes and he calls out he comes he opens his door and says come come to me mm-hmm. the faith of the people this is where the ranks come in of the the degrees of the people the yeah. degrees of the believers so when when he comes and he calls out the faith and the the the, the fast of the respond of this person that's what decides what degree you'll be in. So if he stays there, I'm, I'm going to scratch, I'm going to scratch, his degree is going to be lower than the first one who's mm-hmm. like, oh, I see that's someone from God. Let me run to him. Yeah, his exactly. faith and his his uh, fast yeah. response sh- shows what degree he will be in. You know, I just, I just you know, uh, mostly what I'm talking about here is is those people who are so adamant about the five daily prayers or mm-hmm. about like following the laws or about the fasting you mm. know it's like it, it those things they there's su- there's such a deep and meaningful purpose mm. to doing those things you know that that the prophet muhammad and and previous prophets they've given you clues in the scriptures and and you know god told you you know i'm always here for you just just talk mm. to me yeah. i'm always here it it says in the books it says look whoever asks of of me You know, I'm always here to listen. You know, even uh, you know, in um, in the time of Jesus, he said that that um, how many of you, you know, when when your son asks you for for bread, would give him a, a snake or a stone? Mm-hmm. You know, so if you who are evil, you know, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the, your Father in heaven give to mm-hmm. those who ask of Him? You know, so He's always here to to save us, to to uh, to protect us, to a- answer us when when mm-hmm. we are confused, when when we are sad, when we want to know, mm-hmm. when we want to um, know what's the purpose of this, what is what is the meaning of this verse, what mm-hmm. you know, what is the purpose of my life, and He always He always answers it, and and this is a big answer from God. The time exactly. coming, this is the biggest answer from God for everybody who is who is you know trapped and mm-hmm. and enslaved to these empty religions. Works empty ritualistic yeah. uh, deeds that have yeah. no purpose mm-hmm. exactly and the, uh, this goes to show that people don't really know religion and the true definition of religion and that's why i found it so beautiful when i was like from a, from him his piece explained so well that the whole purpose of religion is to find that veil in creation mm-hmm. so that clearly religion is that veil you know religion mm-hmm. is that man religion is that messenger mm-hmm. Re- religion is that prophet or the imam of your time So it, despite even if you did these rituals to the like so like per, and perfected them it doesn't mean mm-hmm. anything if you don't have that man beside you mm-hmm. or you don't have that man that you believe in mm-hmm. in your time that is and that's the key word yeah. it has to be someone that you have to find in your time mm-hmm. or else none of the books and nothing of religion that you have out there makes any sense mm-hmm. that's why there's so much atheist Mm-hmm. You know that they, they don't understand like what 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 someone in the right mind would follow such rituals, and they're not even sure. 
where they're going to go at the end mm. because there's no one really truly telling them there's no one infallible truly telling them they're all fallible mm. beings that are telling them mm. so we get from our psych that yes god he created adam adam was the first veil and then mm. he has many veils and he has many names he had some of the names are like noah moses jesus muhammad mm. okay right now he has a this the veil which is the riser so when the riser gives the call of god just as the prof- past prophets have done so as yasmin already mentioned the first to respond to his call that's what determines your rank with god that's what determines your faith with god your position with god because you as soon as you heard it you ran towards him and you're like i recognize this i know what i'm doing i know why i'm here i i meaning your soul is very much in control of yourself mm-hmm. like that's what you've proven to yourself and congratulations to that and then as 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 the calling continues and continues and then the more the uh, others join then they their degree is placed based on how, when they uh, respond to him and they join him i think that's uh, so much justice in that yeah. because you chose that degree yeah. you can't cry about it you can't complain about it uh the angels can't be like oh no i wish i was where michael is or where gabriel is no yeah. why you, is he there and not me yeah but, but mm. it's because you responded oh why are these people uh, with the with the with the riser right now why am i not because you chose not to be you mm-hmm. it said that crawl onto ice and even if you're in a box as you said just yeah. break out that box and come mm. to the veil you were meant to do that that was mm. how much because because you will regret it mm. you know so then it's best to just do as the hadith say do as when the calling comes to you and you feel it ask god like truly from your heart is this truthful he'll give you the sign for sure he will not misguide you mm. if he like impossible it's an impossible uh, otherwise there's no god mm. so when you do so and you join and then just know that you chose that position mm. yeah and uh, it's just there's just so much mercy and justice in everything in all that uh, the way god has placed the system you know mm. and the test mm. on this earth that is mm. i think it's amazing mm. it is amazing you know and and those who recognize you know the voice of god you know um there's a quote you know there's another quote from from the bible i mean you know is is my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and i know them you know so so those who who recognize the voice of god and they and they run to him and they crawl on ice to him and and they go and support him and are happy and love him you know those belong to god you know yeah, those yeah. are the ones um who are the angels they will come back they will go back up mm-hmm. to be with, yeah, with exactly. the angels you know but those who don't recognize it and and who ignored or even fight or try to kill the veil they are in the likeness of iblis mm-hmm. and they belong and their origin is with iblis mm-hmm. unfortunately you know um so so they will go where where yeah. iblis goes you know so the thing is is that it doesn't matter how ma- how many good works you do how many times you pray how many t- times you fast those things are amazing there's mm-hmm. a time and a place for those things you know they do purify you they 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 help you that when the veil is not there with mm-hmm. you you can purify your soul and constantly think about god so that you can recognize him when mm-hmm. he's there mm-hmm. you know those things are good for a time and a place but but it's not an excuse to disbelieve and disobey exactly. the veil because when the veil is there that's mm-hmm. your mission mm-hmm. you know you've reached your goal so now mm-hmm. go to your goal you know now the praying and and the fasting is great that that mm-hmm. that's amazing that you do charity but it's not there's no there's no purpose in it unless you recognize and follow the veil mm. you know there's a there's a hadith um that i can quote um that's amazing and it says the love of ali is a good deed that no bad deed can harm and the hatred of ali is a bad deed that no good deed could benefit mm. so so when you recognize and have the proof over you mm. that the veil you've seen it you've mm. heard it you recognize it you have to you have to go mm-hmm. you know and and that's the only way that's the only way that you can know god mm-hmm. those who are ignorant of the veil are ignorant of god mm-hmm. you know this is how this is the only way and this is the true purpose mm-hmm. of why why we have religion in the first place mm-hmm. why we're here is mm-hmm. to hear and recognize the veil and go to it mm-hmm. yeah. you know and and this is how we enter paradise is because paradise that who, who guess um guess what paradise is where god is god rules paradise so you 
God should be your ruler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, how can you expect to be among God? You know, amongst God, if you don't recognize him and you don't care and you even fight the veil, mm-hmm. you know, you could never enter paradise, the gates of, of heaven where, where God rules and, and where God lives if you fight him and if you don't mm-hmm. even recognize him or obey him. I mean, it's yeah. called the veil for a reason. It's it's that what's between you and God. You exactly. cannot reach God unless you you, you you see that veil and you you recognize that veil to be God's veil. Yeah. How I, you, how can it's like it's it's just strange because it's like a curtain it's like a door mm-hmm. if you're going to enter that room you know where you can find God you have to go through that veil that curtain that door otherwise you're lost you can't access it yeah. exactly so um, we find as well that in the Haftar Sharif uh, Imam Sadiq peace be upon him he does talk about these degrees you know. We we said that we we uh, the veil yeah. comes calls out and you run towards that veil. Uh, who's the first one? Yeah. So um, there comes these degrees, right? And um, we find that there are people who recognize parts, okay, of the veil, um, but they don't accept the totality of it. So they that's, recognize that's a, it. Fascinating, isn't it, to think about? Like, mm. uh, how do you accept that? Uh, you recognize it, but you're not gonna. Yeah. Fully I mean, the same it. way. The yeah. same way the Sunnis they they believe in the teachings of Prophet Muhammad and they believe, you know, in the Sunnah and they go and they follow. They they follow the so the strange. five daily mm-hmm. prayers and stuff. But they don't really believe in the Muhammad of the time. They don't believe mm-hmm. that a messenger would come and guide them. They they want to mm-hmm. be their own guide. I mean, yeah. it's true. Like, what would have? What would have? What like what would these people do if they were in the time of Muhammad and they saw him like fresh come forward in these early days of Islam where they like, would do the same they're thing they're yeah, doing now exactly mm-hmm. so that's like it's scary they really need to think about it you know it is and and that's why we have to be fast in this as believers as true believers of God as true worshippers of God it, it requires you to to be fast and 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 not just be like hmm, let's wait and uh, and see what's happening I I see goodness but I'm not really hundred percent sure. So, so that's why in this in the Haftar Sharif it desc- describes it. So this is one degree, but th- this is like the it doesn't even count as a degree. Just like you know, uh, the the first degree of a, a believer is a believer whom Allah tested his heart for faith. Okay, so we find a hadith Ahl uh, Bayt peace be upon them say they say our matter is a hard one, and it is a difficult one. Nobody can handle it except for a prophet messenger or a close angel or a believer that God has tested his heart for faith. So that's the first degree, a believer that God has tested his heart for faith. Now, next uh, degree is the next one is the rank of a prophet. Okay, so the imam, he continues explaining this. Um and this person, or, or this rank, is anyone can elevate and become a rank of a prof- prophet, okay? And it's a rank, the rank of a prophet is also a rank of a close angel. Uh, that's mentioned in that narration that we spoke about just now. Uh, and the hadith said, nobody can handle our matter except for those three, mm. okay? So it's a prophet messenger or an angel or a believer, a believer that God tested their heart for uh, for faith. faith, right? And um, <coughs> so it's like like if you look at the angels, it's like the angel, the angels they prostrated to Adam, right? They had full blind obedience and submission to the veil, and they recognized the veil. Okay, and this rank is also the same as most of the companions had of the prophet, uh, and. There are certain hidden hadiths that are really interesting. And in this hadith, you find one of the imams from his piece. He says what? He says to his companions as they're sitting, he says to one of the companions, Peace be upon you, O Abraham. Peace be upon you, O Jacob. Peace be upon you, O Jonah. Mm. So clearly these companions of the imam were level. prophets, yeah. right? They were They were told by the imam peace be upon you abraham what does that mean because that 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 vessel reached that 
rank and that's what's oh that's uh, like truly that can send shivers down s- someone because like it, it just goes to show what you're capable of becoming yeah. if you respond to this veil. Mm. Look what gift it gives you. Mm. And it's the returned, the returned prophets. The, these people, they're sitting here, they reached that rank, they got returned as that prophet because yeah. they reached that rank, right? So now we spoke about these two ranks. Now Imam al from his piece, he goes into the next rank. The next rank is what is called the rank of the niqab, uh, the, chieftain, the chieftain, right? Uh, and this is one of the nukaba mm-hmm. in Arabic. So in every day and age, you find with a prophet, with a messenger, these 12 Whoa. characters, these 12 people that reached this rank. Yeah. And it's so interesting. Like in the time of Jesus, we have the 12 disciples. They were the ones who reached this rank. And this is a rank that's above the rest, the ranks that we previously spoke of. And these these people they serve uh, as chiefs, chiefs af- as leaders of the angels and prophets, like you know this that's is a huge, huge yeah. right? You are you are a leader over your chief over the angels, angels and the prophets. This is a huge rank you've yeah. reached so far. Mm-hmm. This is the leaders of the companions, the leaders of the believers, and they are the twelve pillars of the Hajjah. In every time, in every age, these twelves are that. And the hadith, there's a hadith that mentions, says, for each and every prophet and messenger and for each and every imam, there's always 12 close companions that are with them. Exactly. And these 12 companions, what is it? They, they reached the final rank and they are of the, at the epitome of faith. Yeah, it's like truly they reached it. And this is something that everyone, are st- like you strive to reach this. You can be a normal believer. You can have the, that rank of, of, of being a normal believer, you know, or you can have the further, another rank of like being a prophet, but this is like the rank, you know. And um, at the time of Jesus, um, if you just thought that Jesus was a righteous person, that would be the deg- first degree, the degree of faith, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so for instance, we have the 72 disciples of Jesus. These characters were at the first degree the 72 ones their heart was tested for faith for faith and uh, what did jesus do he sent them to the people to call to the da'wah to call to jesus and uh, these 72 they went out they called just like just like god used to send prophets right just before jesus arrival god used to send these prophets and this number is really interesting because uh, this number of 70 or 72 exists in diff- in diff- with different prophets and messengers. We find many stories that talk about them. And for instance, Moses, when he mont- went up to the mount, he, he requested to see God and he had those 72 uh, or 70 prof- uh, characters with him, these believers. Mm. And God manifested himself there and they were all struck and they fell down. And there is a narration that mentions that all of them were prophets. Yeah. Okay. And we can go into so many narrations that talk about these 70. And, and it, it seems like there's this 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 um, connection, with the, connection with the numbers. So like if you are at this degree, there's 70. If you're in the next degree, there's 12 of them. Yeah. And so we, we, we have this whole system of degrees that are mentioned in the Hafta Sharif. And there's so much to be mentioned about this this um, okay. this this story, right, and this topic. And we unfortunately are not able to continue all of it today, uh, as it's so much. And we hope that we will continue in the next episode where we'll continue talking about this and go into depths and see these mystical uh, stories and mystical explanations between Imam al-Sadiq and Mufaddal, uh, peace be upon uh, the Imam and Mufaddal. And so for today, we will say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.